Hello, my name is Sergey, and in this video we are going to derive the Black-Scholes formula. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sergey. In this video I'm really excited to share with you the simplest and quickest way that you can derive the Black-Scholes option pricing formula. This method does depend on making a few assumptions and using a few mathematical tools that I'm not going to cover in this video, but these tools allow you to arrive at the Black-Scholes PDE relatively quickly and with a few simple steps. Let's have a look into them. So in order to derive the Black-Scholes formula, we begin with an options contract. Let's assume that we're working within the equity markets and this options contract is on a stock. I'm going to denote this option by a letter V. So V S T is going to represent our option. Now, what we're trying to do right now is to answer the most important question in life universe. And you know, we're trying to answer the most important question in financial markets, which is how much something should be worth. In this case, what's the price of our option? What's the fair value that one should pay for it? Now, what's the most common way that we usually use to find the value of things in finance? Well, obviously, we can find out what the future cash flows are going to be, discount them to present value, and then sum them up, and that should give us the value of this product right now. But with an option, the future cash flows are a little bit uncertain. We don't know how much the option is going to pay out, because the option depends on the underlying S, and we don't know the future value of S. Is there anything else we can do? Well, actually there is. And this method may sound a bit redundant and obvious, but actually it does make sense. And what we can do is we can take this option and try to see if we can find the same exact option traded in the markets. And if we can find such an option, we can see what its price is. And since these two are the same contracts, then the price of this option should be equal to the price of that option. Now, obviously it sounds a bit Strange, because if we had this exact same option traded in the market, then this whole exercise is a bit pointless, because we already know the price of this option. But what if that option isn't actually an explicit option? What if it was instead a trading strategy? If we can find a trading strategy that gives us the exact same payout as the option, then we can find what was the price of that trading strategy. And the price of that trading strategy should be the same as the price of our option. Because if it wasn't, let's say that the option the market price of this option was higher than this cost of trading strategy. In that case, we can sell the option, replicate it through our trading strategy cheaper, and pocket the difference between the option and the trading strategy as profit. So what we're trying to do right now is to see if we can find such a trading strategy. And if we can, what will be its value? Now, how can we find such a trading strategy? Remember, the trading strategy has the exact same risks as our option, which means that we can offset them against each other and create a portfolio that is completely risk-free. Now, you will note that the option depends on this letter S, which is the underlying price. And what we can do to find such a trading strategy is we can trade an option and then combine it with a certain number of underlying shares and see if we can offset these risks against each other. So we'll create a portfolio denoted by letter P which contains one option, V. And what we're going to do is we're going to sell a certain number of shares against that option. How many shares? Well, we don't know yet. We're going to denote this by letter delta. But this number represents a certain number of shares that we've sold against this option, times the share price. So this is our portfolio. What we're trying to do right now is to see how the portfolio changes. We're not really interested in absolute values of this portfolio, but we're interested in how the portfolio evolves through time. Because if in that evolution there are some risk factors, we want to see if we can cancel them out. So what we're interested in is in the change of the portfolio value, which is denoted by DP right here. And the change in portfolio is actually quite simple. It's the change in our options value minus delta and then the change in our stock. So DV and DS are the terms that we're actually interested in. Can we find them out? Well, DS is the change in our stock. And ds is given to us by the geometric Brownian motion, which is ds equals to mu s dt plus sigma s dw. So many of you might recognize this formula, which is the formula for the simple geometric Brownian motion of a stock price. Now, it consists of two different components. The first one is this dt term, 
And that's the deterministic component. And that represents the drift of our stock. So that's the, just the growth rate. The second component is what actually gives us uncertainty, and that's the volatility. So this term is driven by dw, which is the Brownian motion, and that represents the uncertainty within the ds. So this term is the volatility. dw is then scaled by s and sigma, and depending on the sigma value, um, depends how much volatility there is in our stock. So this ds term we have, fine. How, how about dv? dv is the change in the value of an option's price. v depends on s and t, so v is a function of a stochastic process s, which we have right here. And what we can use right now is something called an Ito's lemma. Ito's lemma tells us that if v is a function of a stochastic process, dv should behave as the following. I'm going to write down the Ito's lemma right here. Now, this is the Ito's lemma, and it tells us that if v is a function of a stochastic process s, then dv should evolve according to this equation right here. Now, in this equation, you'll note that we have a dt term, ds term, and ds squared term. What I want to do now is I'm going to leave the ds term as it is, but I would like to substitute the ds squared term using this equation right here. And in this case, ds squared simply means that I need to cross multiply these terms together, and most of them will cancel out apart from the dw squared term. So if I do that, what I'm going to be left with is the following equation. So this is the final equation that we have. Again, you'll note that I have ds term here. I would like to leave it as it is. And what I want to do next is to substitute this formula for dv back into our portfolio right here and see what we have. If I do that, I will have ds term right here and ds term here, and I'll have two dt terms. Let's group them together. So in this case, dp is going to be equal to the following. So that's our dt term. Now let's group the ds terms together. So ds comes from here and from here. So that's our ds term. Now, as you can see, our portfolio now depends on two terms, the deterministic dt term and the stochastic ds term. But you'll note something quite interesting about the ds term. In here we have the delta. And what we can do is we can actually set the delta to dv ds. And if we do that, a little bit of magic happens. This term cancels out and becomes zero. So that means that we have completely eliminated the risk in our portfolio simply by choosing delta as dv ds. And you will also recognize that delta is simply the change in the value of an option per unit change in the underlying price, which is a common definition of a delta. And if we do that, our portfolio is just a dt term, which means that the portfolio is now deterministic, and as such, it doesn't carry any risk. And a risk-free portfolio should yield a risk-free rate, which means that we can write a different equation for dp. In this case, dp would equal to our risk-free rate r, then the value of portfolio p, times dt. So this just says that the portfolio value should grow at a risk-free rate. And what we can do now is we can substitute this value of p back into this equation, and what we're left with is So now we have two equations for our portfolio change dp. And what we can do is we can simply set them equal to each other. Straight away you'll see that dt and dt will cancel out, leaving us with just this term being equal to that term. And if I group them to one side, what I'm going to be left with is the formula that looks like this. And straight away you recognize this entire formula as the Black-Scholes equation. And what we can do now is we can set v to be equal to either a call option or a put option and solve the Black-Scholes equation for an exact formula of an option's price. Now, as you can see, there's been just a few steps that we've used to arrive at the Black-Scholes PDE. And that's pretty much all you have to do. So thank you very much for watching. That's all I have for this video. If you're new to the channel, it'll be great to have you on board. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.